Welcome to episode 34. And it's kind of like part B of episode 33 because I got busy explaining how to change a rotten, rusty door panel in this cherry red project. And it was 45 minutes. Like I cut it down from about four hours of video to 45 minutes. I don't know, maybe do I give too many details? I'm not sure, but there's nothing worse than watching a how-to video and trying to figure something out and a main detail is missing and something you really need to know. Um, and then you got to keep researching, right? So, but anyway, we're going to talk about aligning the, the moving parts, like the doors and the hood, to the stationary parts, like the fenders and the body. And those, you know, we worked on aligning the basic, you know, car together way back. Um, so that the fenders and the grill and, the, you know, the rest of the body would all fit together properly. The height is right. And now I'll set those mounts in place and then I can start working on the fenders. I got to take the brace out because I need to put a door in here so I can try the fender. There's one bolt here where the fender bolts at the top. Other than that, I have no, not, no points of reference <laughs> because there's nothing left of the 49 from the firewall forward. And so we're going to cobble all that up. I've decided that that's where the body's going to stay, not going to move again. <laughs> and then the rest of everything else is going to have to fit around it. Yeah. So here goes. I'm really hoping that this will work. Um, you know, I mean, we'll try pretty hard at this point because we've come a long ways. <laughs> and, and it's been working. I am actually quite impressed with the way this has worked so far, the way that it has actually fit up with the Cadillac pretty nicely. But now we go to put the, the doors on and the hood, and we find huge discrepancies. It, years ago, there was a, a group of Japanese automaking engineers that came to the States to visit one of the GM factories. And, you know, U.S. engineers and Japanese engineers is great. <laughs> And they went through the whole, you know, the GM process of building cars and the, the assembly line and all that kind of stuff. And one of the fascinating parts was the putting together the, the doors, mounting the doors and, and those kind of things and how GM would, um, you know, beat them and twist them <laughs> and ma manipulate them into fitting properly. And so after the whole thing was over, one of the Japanese guys asked, like, why don't you just make doors that fit? <laughs> well, that's a good question. And you think about GM, you know, I mean, they started back in the 18, well, early 1900s. And then, you know, building these old cars like this 49 Chev fleet line, there's a lot of misalignment, you know, that goes on. And so I find that when we took some of these cars apart, salvaging stuff, there, there was spacers everywhere like there's spacers that go in to align stuff and you kind of have that question well why didn't you just make it to fit in the first place or was it that difficult but now i get into this process of making these doors fit you'd wonder why you can't just adjust things and make it fit and the first response might be well because you've done so much welding on this car and of course welding moves everything but in actual fact it was like that before i started welding it before i took the old car apart before i cut the floor out of this 49 chev these doors were already jammed up like that now the only yeah so i don't know they're pretty clumsy cars right i mean pretty crude but the other issue is that these fenders came from a different car. I mean, they're supposed to be this, obviously the same fender, but who knows, right? Like maybe they were aligned at the factory and yeah, it was good on the other car and this was good on this car. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to get it and it's going to be uh, a nice looking alignment um, because that's one of the things that... You, when you look at an old car, you can tell how good of a builder built the car quickly by looking at the alignment of the, of the doors and all of the body parts. Do they align? Because once we get this done, we get the doors fitting properly into the door jams. We get the fenders made it up to those properly so that they're all good with the front, with the grill and everything is tight against the 
the front of the Cadillac and I'm not making any more adjustments there. It is where it is and, um, and I've had it together and it looks good. So all of the adjustment now on these fenders is going to be right here uh, where it meets the door. And so then the next one will be the hood, right? We put the hood on and I already know because I've had the hood on and off several times. It on one side, it like touches the, the door. On the other side, there's a half inch gap. <laughs> on the passenger side, it's different, you know, it's kind of wide here, narrow there. But like the door's cut in there and the hood isn't, the hood comes straight down. On the driver's side, he put my finger in the hole. <laughs> Now, it's a puzzle because the gap up here is nice and even all the way across. And yet this hood seems to be short. Like we're talking, what, three-eighths of an inch or something. So I think I'll actually have to add a piece onto this hood on this side. I don't think that was intentional, you know, like it just screwed. But again, that hood, the hood and these fenders came from a different car way over in Saskatchewan. So, you know, maybe they got stretched or something. Who knows, in the heat over there. Now, if your life is so blissful that your car never spent years in a boneyard with parts being rubbed off it or in a cow pasture with the bulls beating on it, uh, you know, it comes already aligned from the factory. But here we're doing the factory alignment, and some of these things are so far out, of course, these gaps. Now, how do, what, do you, what do you do with that? This is a very, very extreme case and condition that you should never have to do, but I have to do it because I'm building my car basically out of scrap. Cutting into the edge of the door, of course, the, the way the doors are built, right, the, the skin of the door, as we saw in the last episode, comes to the edge of the door frame and overlaps and then it's you know flat and tight on there and so to cut that edge you're going to cut it into two pieces so you're going to have one flappy strip sitting there from on the inside plus the door skin on the outside after cutting it you have to weld it back together and it's the same process as any other sheet metal welding very carefully very slowly one little dot at a time but Remembering to clamp these two pieces together so you put a clamp on and then do the weld as you go a little bit at a time so the door doesn't fall apart. And then the other scenario is where the door was too short and I had to add a piece on. So what I did was took a piece of uh, 20 gauge, inch and a half wide or whatever, and in the metal brake, folded it in half and then squeezed it tight with the bead roller. And so you, you end up with, with this kind of a thing, right? So it's got a nice smooth edge here, like the natural edge of the door. And then cut it to whatever width you need. And um, on the driver's door, I had to start with from zero at the top down to 11 millimeters, or like three-eighths of an inch at the bottom. It's quite a, quite a piece added in there. Um, but if you didn't do it, it would look silly in the end. So again, body panel welding, dot, 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 clean it up first so there's no paint or anything. So then parts that are too close together, the gap's too narrow, you got to cut one side or the other and weld it. And I just use masking tape, you know, to make myself a nice smooth looking line. And then where it's too much of a gap, You've got to add some in there um, and carefully measuring. I mean, I just measured it in millimeters because it's easy. Um, so then I cut my piece to match that and welded it on and yeah, it works. It's, it's a way to put together salvage parts and get them aligned. <laughs> now there's still a little bit more fine alignment to do. I notice at the front, the hood on one side is just a little high when it's closed. So we'll have to be adjusting the, um, the hood latch uh, and, and, and some of those things. But here's the trick with the door. Not only do you need the right gap, and basically start from the back, right? So you get the right gap at the back of the door, 
and at the bottom of the door, and hopefully the top is right. They should be, but they weren't, so I had to do some bending and twisting, just like they did at the factory. And then get to the front of the door, and then found out that the front of the door in some parts were too tight, and you can't open it because you know how you open the door and it got to, it's got to go inside the fender, right? It kind of goes around inside there. When you open the door, it hits. And so they has to, it has to have enough of a gap so that they can pass without chipping the paint off of each other, but not too much of a gap that it looks gaudy. And so to get the doors aligned at the back, I had to move the hinge holes ahead at the front on the door post. Okay, aligning these door hinges, starting at the back, you know, looking at the gap, of course there's some binged up stuff here, and that looks tight there, but I think that's the fault of the jam, because down here it looks good and up here it looks good. So we'll worry about that some other way. And then, of course, the bottom gap, that's about right, tends to get tighter towards the front. So I put this little spacer in there to hold it up. And then it's tight up here. The other door is the same. I don't know if I have to get drastic with that or not. And then we come to the hinges and you wonder why this has to be moved ahead. These holes has to be moved ahead because the whole door has come ahead. Um, so three holes here, we'll just die grind those out and then fill the back up some more. And then as well, the hinge hits the door post in here. So we've got to actually grind part of the door post back as well, top and bottom. And then once you've adjusted the hinges to where the back of the door alignment is right, then you move to adjusting the gap between the fenders and the front of the door. And again, of course, some added, some subtracted. And one more thing, you know, you think about those Japanese engineers just kind of shaking their heads at the American engineers because they're beating their doors into place to make them fit a line in the car when they could have just done a little better engineering. But see what would happen with the GM guys. You can imagine this happening over the years. They did it in the beginning, right? The simple cars with square doors and yeah, you just make it fit, make it close and then bang it into place. And um, that's where the rubber hammer was invented. And then you keep doing that and keep doing that and, it, and the cars progress and the design progresses, but the methods don't progress. <laughs> and so you end up doing new things the old way and without realizing it. And I don't know, I find myself doing that all the time. You get locked into an old mindset. Um, where if you would just kind of stop and stand back and take a look and say, you know what, that's a stupid way of doing that. And you know, there's a lot of people that do things the dumb way and you can't tell them any different um, because they're the professional. Uh, but for you and me, we can stand back and say, you know what, am, am I doing this like a crazy way? Is, is there a better way to do this? I'll tell you what, I've learned so much on this Cherry Red project uh, new ways of doing things, um, not only by researching, but looking at problems and thinking, now, how am I going to solve that? I mean, I've never had to align car doors before like this because I've always had cars that came as a whole, right? And now having to align these doors, I had to decide, like, first when I looked at that, and I thought, you know, I'm going to cut the front of that door off down the seam. I thought, man, that's a crazy thing to do. Or I'm going to add a piece on how could you do that and make it not look, you know, all, all lumpy and, and, and uh, makeshift. But, you know, you just do the stand back, take a look thing and um, say, you know what, that could be done. Why not? Try it. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> you wreck a door that's already no good. <laughs> I mean, we don't want to wreck things, but we do want to make good things out of old things or great things out of bad things. 
See you next week.